Hello friends, welcome to another video. Today we are going to mod this Ninebot G30 Max. It is already modded with a shark set front and rear and today we are going to install a additional battery with 12 volts. So we have 48 volts and I think that we can reach then about 40 kilometers per hour. Yeah, that's what the last one reached. So I think we will also get on this one 46 when we are just lifting it and letting the tire spin freely and if we really ride on the we will reach to 40 kilometers per hour and this one already has the scoot hacking firmware installed so I will only film the most important steps so disassembling, this is not that difficult, I will skip this and record, resume recording when I'm... everything is open. Okay, now I, as you can see, I rotated the scooter and opened it. And here is the controller, here is the battery, here is the internal charger. And normally you connect him here. And we are going to get this thing out and also unscrew this and replace this part with, let me show you, with this connector here and I'm also going to glue it in, you will see it and then we will connect the 12 volt battery and that it can be charged with a 12 volt power supply here this one came with 12.6 volt 5 amps and I have a slow charger now with 2 amps and 36 volts and I will also get a 9 volt charger, the 5 amp charger that's a bit faster here you can see 42 volts and 2 amps so we can charge the internal one, the larger one with the 2 amp it's going to take some time and that's why we recommend you to maybe get the faster one if you need it and if you don't need it, you can also get a slower one for this small battery here. It's, as you can see, three cells and one, two, three, four. So 12 cells in total. And you can also get a slower one for it because it's fast charging with 5 amps or something like that. So this is how it looks like and this is for the main battery now plus and minus and we're adding to the plus of the main battery the additional battery in series so as you can see it goes like this so this is the minus pole of the additional battery this is the plus pole of the additional if you look at the colors and and it goes to the controller and this is maybe charged to i don't know 11 volt or something like that and this one has about 70 percent so it's better i think to not have them fully charged before connecting them because those of a higher voltage and higher spikes currents and something like that when you connect it actually because it's going to you will see it or hear it when i connect them to the controller there is like you can hear it like a you know, discharge because the capacitors of the controller that are reside here when I disconnect the battery they are going to discharge and then when we connect it back it, they are going to pull a lot of current yeah now we will get this thing out and also unscrew this a bit the controller and they can then push it a bit down like I don't know a few millimeters and it should be enough space to get the other battery inside and yeah let's continue I'm going to unscrew everything and first disconnect the battery here the main battery let's see if I can disconnect it yeah I have to unscrew it first and then I can disconnect it easier so I don't know if you can see it here is a bolt and down here let's get this thing out here 
I have large, large fingers, so you can pull this back, put this back. So on these two sides, and this one is also, we'll get this first out. Here is a screw or a bolt, and also here, and then we can unscrew this thing. And there is one here, one, one is down there, and the third bolt is, I think, right here in the middle. So three bolts are holding this charger, the internal one, that charges normally with three amps or something like that. As you can see, I unscrewed this part and unplugged the connector. This is for the fast charger, actually. The port. And we are going to use this to charge the internal battery directly. So normally this wire, when it's connected like with the internal power supply or with the internal charger. And here you can see the wires. These are 230 volts and neutral plus ground. And this is when you really connect 230 volts directly. And we can now remove the ground because we are not going to connect now 230 volts here. This is okay. And then, yeah, I will unscrew this and put the screw back in and tighten it. As you can see, I cut this up. And you have to be careful because this is really tight. Then I disconnected the battery down here. And also, this is also bad for the battery connector. And because I'm going to mod this a bit, to improve a bit the, the cooling, let's say, I'm going to disconnect everything. And as you can see, it's glued on a bit. But normally we are able to get it out. Just make sure to press and then you can get it out. And they are all in different sizes, so normally you will not be able to, to connect them wrong. Because this one is a bit shorter than this one. And this one is for the light. Just press here and pull it out. And now, because it's unscrewed, I'm able to be careful with this, to not short anything, to get this thing out. Did I forget something? Of course I did, but I'm not going to unscrew this. These are for the main, for the motor cables, because I can already work. And let me show you, the screws are still inside. This is a quick, easy mod. And yeah, you can imagine this thing is inside and this is a thermal pad that helps this cooler like to dissipate heat into the frame here. And this middle part, there is like air. This is a pad that is touching only here and here. And this surface, it can also touch the frame here. But there is nothing in between. So we can, it's really easy. Just take a knife or something and cut this thing out here. And it's a thermal pad with a sticker on, so make sure to put it on in the right direction. So I'm going to cut here through and I'm doing going to do it off camera. So just cut here and down here and then we can use the parts for here for these four spots. So we have then a bigger surface and a better cooling. Yeah, now you can see it, I cut this away and just added here the pads and on the pads on one side there is a glue because as you can see it sticks to my finger and you can just put it on and now it's a bit difficult but normally when you have two free hands you can put it on something like this and then just shorten it or cut away the this thing here that's left and then you improve the cooling a bit and now okay i have to remove this also and continue in a few seconds okay i put a few layers five four or five layers here and also covered this part and also the other side 
So normally battery is going to sit here, it's not going to get in between or in this corner here. But just to be safe, let's say like this, I added this. And the battery is also coated and it has a BMS inside. Here is the BMS and they are good packaged. But just to be safer, let's say, I added this. And then we can continue. Okay, guys, let me quickly mount the cam and then we can start with the desk work, let's say. Okay, now we have here the power supply, and I also have a, a black glue, it's like hot glue or something. And we are going to need a soldering iron. And normally, I like to do it like this. I do not want to change anything on the battery. So some of some of the guys I saw they are like cutting these connectors or the the female part or the male part that is on the battery. This is the one. They are cutting it on the battery, and then soldering this connection here directly to the battery. But I do not want to do it like this. I'm going to replace this connection with this one. So the battery is going to stay stock and this is the power supply, the internal one and yeah, it doesn't matter for me, I'm going to modify this and if I need to charge something else with this, I will anyway need another connector. So I like to do it like this. Okay, this knife is already really short. I'm going to cut this to a good length let's say that we can use to work with this looks okay for me normally let's see if i can pull this off looks like they glued it on a bit this shrink wire here shrink cable and if not i have to cut it but i want to be careful do not want to damage anything now we're able to get these wires free yeah that's enough i think for working now it's enough for sure there is already hot glue inside here okay and now let's remove this part will need small bit one moment okay should be this one it's like a torx t10 t10 okay now one of them let's get a, the other one out also this is the second one and now we can let's see no i think that we are also able to get this out with something like a screwdriver here it's like a silicone or something inside to seal this thing normally we should be able pull this thing out have to push it out let's see what's easier as you can see this is already moving let's try it With a bit of a force yes i was able to push it in and this was connected to the frame this, yeah this is how it looks like Put this aside and make sure to not lose this thing here. This is needed for sealing, so no water or less water is going to get in, let's say like this. Now what's also going to make us problems is this thing here. We need to cut this away. It might 
knife is already really short, but it's sharp. Let's remove this quickly. And now you can also, if you want, get this thing out here so it's not going to close and open all the time if it's easier for you to work. But for me it's okay like this and I'm going to, to cut in here. get this thing out or at least the part that I cut it now and yeah that's this thing the rest can stay inside now okay let's get this thing in plus and minus looks okay and I like to put it like this. So I like this thing here. As you can see, this shining one. It's actually for the minus, and it is going to clamp it a bit. So the connector is going to stick better. I like to put it that it's going to look upwards. So, so the red one is going in like this. And the red one is later when we screw everything in. Let's see if we can get it in. We have to cut a bit away. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you. Um, we have to cut in. Not that much, just a bit. Here. This part here. So it's actually it is hitting the frame here or the screw or something. So I'm going to cut in a bit. I think this should be enough to get everything in. Hope that there are no sharp, sharp edges. Okay, let's check. It fits in. Yeah, now it fits in perfectly. And if you want, you can also add here a bit of of hot glue inside, and then press it in. But for me, this looks okay like this. And let's screw it in. And yeah, let me show you quickly for the cam what I did. Maybe you didn't see it. This is what I cut away. A bit here. And it is not sharp or something. Now we can get this in. Easily. Fits. Perfectly. And I ordered the battery on eBay, Kleinanzeigen it's called, or just Kleinanzeigen, I think they have changed the name, Kleinanzeigen.de or eBay Kleinanzeigen. And yeah, I will ask the guy if he wants me to put a link or something in the description, but you can find it or you can write me in Discord. And if you want also to buy it. Now this is back inside. That's how it looks like. Let's use some hot glue here. 
and we're going to fill this up so this is no no water is going to get in from here and this looks nice and then we can bend it but we, let's wait until this heats up a bit and continue with this connector here so now this is for the additional battery and this is going to be for the main battery so here we're the 42 volt and this for the 12 volts let's change this connection to the battery connection so minus to minus plus to plus like this and going to cut this and now i was able to open it a bit i don't need the shrink wire so now what i like to do you do not have to do this but if you want you can i want to make Uh, the, for example, the black one a bit shorter on this side, and so it is going to the red one is shorter here, and then when we solder them together, if something is wrong, they're not going to touch each other, the connections. Because they're off. Let's slowly remove this. And I'm not cutting in too deep when you cut it or something like that. Make sure that you're not cutting in too deep, otherwise you will damage this. So and now on the other side, and then I'm going to, to solder on them together. So on this side here. And easy enough for me to get them off nice now I think that this is already very hot let's see if we can already Fill this up, yeah. So this thing is not going to move. And if you want, you can add more. Get one more black out and fill this up a bit more. Looks good to me. Ah, yeah what I also want to show you I like to do this because normally as you can see this here is like for to protect it against water so it's going to get in here and then it's really hard for water to get in and now with this one it's much easier because there is nothing and what you can do is 
Yeah, let this dry first a bit. Okay, this is pretty dry, so we can add a bit more. And it sank in a bit, but it is still looking good. So I will add a bit more here. And let me show you what else you can do. And you don't have to worry if you mess this up because with alcohol you can easily clean clean the glue off this hot glue. So I'm going to add now a bit of hot glue inside here, but it's not we do not need that much, just a bit. And let me show you, it's really not much. And I think I do not need this. Turn it off, put it aside. Now we're going to wait until it is getting really, really dry. Needs to be dry. As you can see if I touch it, it's you're getting this strings and we don't need the strings we want it to be dry but not too dry and hard so let's see maybe we can get to the point where it is still we're still able to move it a bit It looks pretty okay now, so I'm going to add a bit of alcohol, or you can use water or something. I'm going to put it over here, and it is going to... to... to go away anyway, to dissipate or something like that. Let's put it on here. To make sure when we close this, it's going to make a form, but not stick to the... to this. Nice. Now you can see what I did. We have like a small form here and this middle part is going to get in here and to seal it a bit. Let's check again. We can close it. Press in a bit here. And open it again. And of course we can cut away this a bit if needed. But the middle part I would not cut it, I would just let it like this and to protect it a bit from water here. This is also getting pretty, pretty, pretty hard. And okay, I think it looks nice. I decided it's okay. Nice. So let's continue. We have this connector for the battery. And I have some shrink wires. And solder. I like to use some flux and add it. Especially later when we not pre-solder them, but when we connect them together. Flux is going to help to have to have a nice connection. So I'll turn on the soldering iron. Let's heat it up a bit. To 360.
Looks good. And where is it? Don't forget the shrink wires. And now we will add a bit more flux. Doing too much. Okay, the shrink wire also got hot. Now it's hard to get it over. I cut a bit of the shrink wire, the tight part, so now I can get it over. At least I think I can. Yes, shrink wire is over. Connections are okay. And where are the connections? Here is one of them. And yeah, let me show you quickly. I want to explain you what I did now. Um, now, as you can see, if there is like the shrink wire is getting bad, they are still a bit off. So they're not going to short out. Or are less likely to short out because they are not on the same spot. No. OK, 
Okay. And of course you can make another connection if you want. I want to add a bit of this electrical tape to But I like to edit. Okay, don't forget this thing here. And as you can see, it's like a nose, or I don't know how to call it. On this side, it's pro it's flat, and on this side, it's not flat. So this side has the flat side has to go onto it. And now we're prepared. So we can now connect the main battery here and the additional battery here. Nice. And it's sealed, let's say. So this is not closing, but this is the stock thing here. When we close this on the other side, it's okay. Let's continue on the scooter. Okay, we're back. On the scooter, I'm going to get this controller first in and I want to make sure also that the controller goes all the way down. So before screwing it, screwing it in all the way, make sure to push it a bit downwards here. Okay guys, here is the battery and it fits in really nicely. It is going to get in like this. So. But we're going to put it in a bit later. As you can see, it fits. I put on one more coat, like of this tape. Let us first get this thing in. So I already put in the the bolts, and they're holding place now by this seal here. And now. We can make sure that it looks good. And get it in like this. Have to open it now and screw it in. Looks nice. I'm not going to screw it in all the way, just getting both sides inside first. I want to press a bit against here in the middle. While I'm screwing it in, so I don't want that there is a gap or something. And then we can screw them in all the way now. Don't use too much force because this is plastic. You don't want to break it. And looks good. Okay, everything is built together now. Let me show you. This is how it looks like. It can close nice. And there's the battery controller, main battery. Here are the wires connected in series and going to the controller. Here is the charging for the um, additional battery. Here is the charger for the main battery, everything is connected, tightened down, it's not moving, and I added some like foam, it's like double sided tape but a bit thicker and soft. So let's see, I don't know if it is too thick, because I covered the battery with one more layer, this, and yeah, also added a bit of tape up here. There's not a sharp sharp edge or something, but still for these wires, but they're not touching. So this foam is inside again. And it looks good. Everything is connected nicely. And let's see. With this thing here, and I put it on. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I can feel that it's a bit touching, like, but not 
not that much there is not a pressure or something on the battery perfectly and it's perfectly centered in the middle so it's not so touching the corners also and I can screw this down nice but before screwing that in let me quickly check if I can turn it on I didn't turn it on so far nice it's turning on and error suppression I think it's disabled not sure maybe also the voltage is now not that high but it can happen that we get an error because of the high voltage have to set it up one moment we'll unscrew this in and rotate them and then we can look what we can we have to set let's say in the SH firmware looks nice Okay guys, let's connect to the scooter hacking utility. And what do we have? 026 and 114 is the BLE and DRV is 026. Let's go to config and profile 1. This is like the stock profile. Let's check it. We can here check first the echo mode. In echo mode we have speed limit of 16 it's okay and it's set to 8 amps with current smoothness 600 milliamps and it looks okay speed based that's okay it's a bit stronger than normal let's say let's go to drive the speed limit in drive is 27 and yeah it's okay why do we have 27 here? Let's go to 21 or something like that. And in sports mode we can go to 27. Okay, we have power limit 15 amps. It's okay. 700 milliamps. Current smoothness auto braking is off. Okay. And let's check uh, sport mode. Sport mode we have 18 amps. Drive mode we have 15, that's okay. And here we have a current smooth distance at 1.1 milliamp or uh, 1101 or 1.1 amps. And speed limit of 26, 18, this is also okay. Speed based again. Then let's go to profile 2. And profile 2, this is the unlocked mode, let's say. We can go to power. DPC like direct power control and go to auto for example build curve and set it here to 23 I don't want to go too high you can also go maybe to 25 or some are going to 27 but I would not recommend 27 and yeah 23 I think it's really okay it's a bit of quadratic let's say so it's going to smooth it out as you can see the beginning and motor start speed is to 2 km per hour cruise control is off here it's okay in profile 1 I think it's on the cruise control yeah with single tap motor start speed is to 2 km and I want to check profile triggers I want to set it to profile 2 apply profile at brake and main button pressed this is going to be profile 1, profile 2, apply that boot, yeah this looks okay. System settings, spoof BLE, disable charging mode and I think we need for BMS emulation, I think we also have to enable error suppression. So it is not going when we full charge both fully. It is, I think, otherwise going to make to show us an error because of too high voltage. And if we enable error suppression, it is not going to show us some any errors. Yeah. What do we have? Disable charging mode. It's also important. And daylight brightness added. How you prefer. And let's check. Let's quickly go to active profiles and switch to profile 2 
or in profile 2 and oh sorry active profile is profile 2 now we can see 70 percent it's charged at the moment and let's see how fast it can go now Yeah, here is the uh, drive. I want to set mode when entering profile sports like and I want only to have the sports mode. Sorry. Now we can see it. I have now in profile 2 with the modes only sport mode enabled. So we have in total four modes, three main modes and then we can switch to the unlimited. So let's check again. We are now like in the Echo, the one cam. Okay, now we have like echo, drive, and we swap the button so we can switch modes easier. And in this mode, normally we can go like 25 or so. I have to. 27, yeah, I set it to 27, I think. Looks good. And let's see when we switch to to the ultimate mode, let's say, to the unlocked mode. Now we have the battery percentage, and I have to move it and lift it up, or turn off the motor start speed, but you can see it. 44 and the batteries are not charged so if we charge them fully we have 46 and when we drive we have around 40 kilometers per hour okay guys now i'm charging the scooter i want to charge it to 100 percent it's i cannot tell you now let me quickly quickly set it okay it's to 80 percent the internal and the additional one it's also, I think, already should be full in a few minutes. And this is the charge I got from Amazon for the internal battery now with 42 volts, 5 amps. And you can adjust it also to, to 41 volts or something like that. You have to open it if you know what you're doing. So you can unscrew this and adjust the potentiometer that's inside to 41 volts, for example and i would recommend you when you use this to if possible i think it's better to charge one and then the other one but also what's important is when you plug these things in make sure to first plug them in inside the scooter here and yeah this one is already full let's unplug it and first plug it in into the scooter and then when it's plugged in turn the power supply on and as you can see this wire is a bit short so I cannot plug it in here because it's going to hang here and I don't want to stress the wire so what you can do is also connect both onto uh, this splitter or something and first connect it to the scooter and then just turn it on and when they are charged you can easily turn them off here and unplug them